In this build series we're transforming a stock Land Cruiser into an expedition vehicle to drive all around Australia and afterwards even much much further. In this episode we're going to be talking about how much water you actually need for remote overland travel, about different water storage solutions and tank installations, as well as how you can build your own water and filtration system. If you're thinking to going to remote locations, there's two things that you have to consider. First of all is your range based on your fuel consumption and your, the size of your fuel tanks. And the other one is your capability of how much water you can carry. Food in general is not a very big problem because it's pretty easy to carry large amounts of food that carry you for a long time. Generally is seen as a pretty healthy range by most overlanders that if you can go about a thousand kilometers without to refueling. One way of achieving this is of course just to carry extra jerry cans. The other way might be that you want to mount an external fuel tank, a long range fuel tank underneath the car, which significantly increases your fuel carrying capacity and keeps the center of gravity or the weight distribution nice down low. Luckily, my troop carrier can come stock with two 90 liter fuel tanks, which means with an average consumption of about 13 to 14 liters per 100 kilometers, should give me a healthy range about 1200 to 1300 kilometers. With water, it's generally a little bit different. Water's consumption is heavily dependent on the situation you're in or how you're handling hygiene, if you're showering or if you're near a water source like a river, for example. Generally, I've found if I'm camping with two people and a dog sometimes and we're not near any water source that we can use for washing the dishes, for example, we're using an average of 10 to 15 liters per day. And that is without showering. That means if I want to be self-sufficient with my setup for about seven days in a situation like going through the desert, I have to carry at least 90 liters of water. Just as a comparison, these are 10 liter drums, so all of this is only 30 liters of water. If you look online, you'll find plenty of water tank solutions that get mounted inside the vehicle. However, the problem is that they take up a lot of space. There are also some water tank solutions that get mounted underneath the troop carrier. However, they're kind of small with only 40 liters of capacity. And unfortunately, they get mounted at the very back of the troopy, which is not really great for weight distribution. Luckily, I found a company who make a 95 liter stainless steel water tank for the troop carrier that gets mounted in front of the rear axle. So basically it ticks all the boxes, which is fantastic. That company is called um, Long Range Automotive and they're local here to Melbourne. First I thought they are somewhat of a small-ish company maybe, but turns out they are manufacturing more than 2,400 fuel and water tanks a year, all locally made here in Melbourne, Australia. But the best thing is when I called them up and had a little bit of a chat, they actually offered I could come by and have a look at their manufacturing processes, which I immediately said yes to, of course, because as an engineer, I'm very interested in these sort of stuff. And there's always something to see and always something to learn. So I'm pretty excited. We are now on the way to Long Range Automotive in Lilydale, next to Melbourne, uh, where we're going to have a look at their manufacturing processes. And at the same time, I'm going to pick up my very own 95 liter water tank. And upon arrival we straight went to have a look into the production line. Aluminum or stainless steel is cut using a CNC plasma cutter.
Afterwards, the cut pieces get bent into the required shape. Once everything is in place, a worker can weld the tank together until the whole thing is done. Every tank also gets a protective coating before they get ready to be sent out in the world. A very big thank you to Long Range Automotive that they got my water tank done in time and that I had the chance to look at the production line. So finally I can show you where the water tank is actually going to go. See this big cavity here, this open space right in front of the rear axle, that's usually where the big muffler of the uh, stock exhaust system sits. Aftermarket exhaust system uh, unfortunately also runs straight diagonally through here, kind of taking up a lot of free space. So I went to Muffler Shop who rerouted my 3 inch um, exhaust system to have a hot dog muffler sitting straight here. I have to say it's not the greatest job they did, but it'll do. But this will free up all the space where the 95 liter water tank is gonna sit. So now it's the time to mock it up, drill some holes and fit it all up. seen we just put a few tack welds on both ends of those plates and on the bolts that will allow me that in in case I ever have to drop the water tank in the future I don't have to remove the floor and the whole camping setup and can just unbolt it straight from underneath the car. Now you can finally see the whole tank installed. You see how it nicely tucks around drive shaft and the diff. And here you can see how all the lines go inside the troopy. So we have the vent line, the fill line, the draw line for the pump, and the water level sensor. All right, the long range automotive 95 liter water tank is finally installed and all plumbed up underneath the car. So now it's time to take care of the rest of the water system. And finally, I got a lot of my supplies. I bought a tap shower basically, which is meant to wash the dishes, hopefully a little bit more efficient. Of course, we're also gonna have a proper sink to wash the dishes. And I also got a delivery I was highly anticipating, which is my water filters. Alright, first of all, so I'm actually gonna run two faucets, one for washing the dishes and one for drinking water supply. You got a high pressure flow pump, so this one's gonna put in out 50 psi instead of I think regular 45. It's just because we're gonna have multiple filters and they're gonna have a significant pressure drop. And here we got our filters. I got a total of three filters from Thirsty Nomad. That is one that is only for the filling line that if in case I have a fill up from a source that is might be not 100% clean. I, it's a sediment filter, so I'm not getting any sediment in the tank. 
Then we have a pre-filter for the water supply. It's a green glass filter that's also back washable. And then we got their five in one drinking water filter and purifier. All right, and all this together, it's gonna make up the whole water supply system in the Trupe, and I'll show you how. The water system is going to work like this. First, we start with our 95 liter water tank. In order to get water in there, we need a fill line and a vent line. Next thing is the water pump that draws the water from the bottom of the tank and keeps the system on 55 psi pressure. Further downstream will be a T-piece that supplies unfiltered water to an outdoor shower. Next is a green glass pre-filter for the dishwashing tap. And last in line will be the 5-in-1 filter that makes the water safe to drink and supplies the drinking water tap. So I wanted to talk with you real quick about water filter, water purification systems. When I got into this, I pretty quickly realized it's not as straightforward as just buying any system and it'll do everything you want. Um, I was looking in, into a lot of different water purification systems that you can use in Overland setups and I was seeing a lot of times those UV setups. I have a UV lamp to disinfect the, the water, basically the drinking water. However, when I was talking to people who work in the industry, not just in the RV sector, but actual water purification. Basically, I heard over and over again that don't bother with UV, it works, it can work really, really well in certain setups, but a lot of times it's not really suitable for this kind of small scale setup. So, not really knowing what I need, um, I wanted to have a water system that basically makes it the drinking water safe for me wherever I am on the world. I'm always trying to get very clean drinking water from local sources, however, just because the locals can drink it, it's clean for them, a lot of times doesn't mean that you actually can drink it without getting any tummy ache or food poisoning. So. I saw this um, Australian company who sell this Thirsty Nomad filter system and as far as I'm aware it is it's a 5-in-1 filter system but the main stage it's just a very very fine 0.01 micron um, ultra filter similar I think to the uh, Life Straws for example or Life Saver systems. They even say that with this system and I have to make a disclaimer only if you use it absolutely correctly you can even draw water out of a river as long as it's clear water and it's flowing you filter it through this and it is safe to drink anywhere in Australia I'm probably not gonna draw anywhere out of the out of a river anywhere in, unless it's an emergency situ situation but I still mm -hmm. want to be safe if you're for example somewhere in Africa or in Asia where the water sources are a little bit unknown and the drinking water out of a well from a village still might be slightly contaminated so what they recommended to me, and they were really, really nice, by the way, I'm not sponsored anyway, but they were really nice and helpful when I talked to them. They said the system, again, with certain limitations, you have to be careful, um, is very, very effective. And I'm going to use this to run all the drinking water I'm going to be using through this filter. However, these filters can clog up, even if the water has too much bacteria or viruses, not just sediment, but these can clog up. Um, that's why I'm gonna run a green glass um, pre-filter. Um, this pre-filter basically already filters out 94% of all viruses and bacteria etc. Um, this will then do the absolute rest of it but the thing is that this one here is back washable. So if I have a lot of contaminant, contaminants in here I can just take this out, run it in reverse and clean it out and put it back in. And as I said previously, this one here is only if I'm gonna fill up from if I'm gonna fill up from a well or something. This is just a sediment filter, so I don't get any sediment in my tank that could either destroy my pump or also clog up these filters. The only downside is usually with these filters they have a really really high pressure drop, and that's why I got a slightly higher pressure pump. It's 55 50 psi versus a regular 45 psi. And I also decided to run two different taps on my sink. So there's going to be a shower setup that's completely unfiltered. There's going to be a dishwashing tap that only runs 
through the pre-filter but it's not you know technically fully filtered for drinking water it's going to be a separate tap it runs through the pre-filter and the fine filter and it's only going to be for drinking water and for cooking for example In the next episode, we'll finally cut open the Troopy and get the rooftop conversion done. 